Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm here with Brian Baker. Hi, Jess. Hi, Brian. Do we have a guest today? We have a special guest today. Oh, great. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, Danielle Vecta from the Michael J. Fox Foundation. She is a Senior Associate Director of Fundraising. Hi, it's How nice are to be you? here. Oh my gosh, doing so good. So Thanks for having me. So excited to have you. Yeah. And you know, you're not from Ohio, so tell us what you're doing in town. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a Jersey girl through and through, oh. um, but I get to travel throughout the country and meet with individuals who support Parkinson's uh, research through the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And uh, this week I am in town to speak at the Ohio Health uh, Parkinson's retreat tomorrow. So I'm oh, looking great. forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. yeah. So this is the excitement that you'll see from Brian's face <laughs> the whole time. Um, so for today, what we wanted to talk to you about is um, you have some, I don't want to say inside information because it's public, but you p- can provide us a little bit more uh, in-depth information on the biomarker mm-hmm. and like the what the spinal tap, uh, yes. whatever. You can talk to us <laughs> about that and the next steps. And then we can talk about... Um, you know, how people can get involved with yeah. Team Fox and how they can do fundraising, because that's always a topic I think people have asked about. So, yeah. Yeah. So let's Happy start with help. the biomarker. That sure. was, uh, we've talked about it now a couple of times on the podcast, but it's still, my biggest thing is I want people to take away what that means sure. for the future. Sure. Yeah. It's, and this is a big topic to jump right into, but knowing yeah. <laughs> that you've already kind of primed your audience for yeah. it um, is, is helpful. Um, essentially, it's called a seed amplification assay. Um, and this technology has existed for a while now. Uh, the researcher that we're working with is out of University of Texas and originally came on our radar because um, he had done this successfully with another disease protein Mm -hmm. not related to Parkinson's. So one of our researchers reached out and said, hey, can you do this with Parkinson's? And he said, absolutely, sure. I just need some money and I need some samples. Um, so that's what we were able to kind of come to the table to launch this. And that was about 2014, I believe. Um, so just shy of 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And we we just announced this information recently. So this test takes uh, synthetic alpha-synuclein, which is a protein in all of our bodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in our skin, our blood. Um, it's in the brain, uh, which is why we see uh, movement symptoms starting to happen with Parkinson's uh, because it can be located in the substantia nigra uh, where the dopamine lives. And these alpha-synuclein for some reason are clumping together to form that toxic environment, Mm -hmm. which will ultimately lead to the brain cells slowing down, decreasing, stop working. We're not entirely sure um, all of the different areas that can happen there, but We know movement symptoms happen because of that. Yeah. So this test takes samples of cerebral spinal fluid, and it takes one from a healthy control, takes someone who has Parkinson's, Mm -hmm. and then they put this synthetic alpha-synuclein in the sample, and that spins around in a test tube for about 24 hours, and when it comes out, it's very clear who is the person with Parkinson's and who is not, because you'll see those alpha-synuclein aggregates or Lewy bodies form together. And now, do they, she said a lot of words that I can't pronounce better. <laughs> yeah, There's a lot, lot going on. Um, alpha-synuclein and whatever. You're doing great. Yeah, that one. But um, is, like, so I thought I read somewhere, and I don't know if it's with this test or not. Yeah. Will this test show if, you know, I don't know if I have the gene or not. Mm -hmm. Um, Will it show differently if somebody doesn't have the gene versus if somebody does carry a gene? So that that's a really good point. Um, so right now we're looking at alpha-synuclein, the protein. Um, so not steak or chicken that you'll have on your dining room table, but proteins that exist in our body and perform different functions. There is an alpha-synuclein gene um, to complicate things further, mm-hmm. but this is actually separate from that. So um, you hit on something really important though, Jess. Not everyone has alpha-synuclein aggregation with their Parkinson's, hmm. but most people do. Hmm. Okay. Um, and we, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is. I, I thought we were all yeah. the same, but we're really not. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I think that's why I'm excited about this, at least to start things, because the, the article that I read and it came from, it was on the Michael J. Fox um, webpage. Mm-hmm. I think they were trying to clarify after the biomarker sure. announcement came out, mm-hmm. like really, what does this mean? And we were reading it last week and it, they were saying something like, you know, if there's... Uh, all apples, you know, sure, looking yeah. at there could be green apples and red mm-hmm. apples and whatever you wanted to be a green one. Um, but 
it's kind of like what I always think of, like with cancers, there's different yeah. types of cancers mm-hmm. and I feel like we're getting our way there. Yes. So with the, with is the goal to be able to diagnose Parkinson's like with a like a skin test? Is that the goal of the? Of the... That's definitely one of them because right now cerebral spinal fluid is available through a test that um, not a lot of people are running to their doctor to go get right <laughs> no. now, yeah. uh, lumbar puncture. But um, yeah, so right now they're working on other ways to detect this alpha synuclein aggregation. So that's skin samples. Uh, blood samples are also something in the works. And then they're even looking at a nasal swab um, mm. to be able to detect it through mucus. Nice. Is that like, you know, because you talked about the alpha synuclein test started in 2014 and now it's almost it's almost 2024, almost 10 years. Is something like that going to take 10 years or do they think those will hopefully be shorter? I think it's going to be shorter. Like the nasal um, swab and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, that okay. stuff is already in the works. Um, so I'm not sure how far along each one of them are right now, mm-hmm. but um, we have been getting some insider information that some of those are a little bit further along. So okay. I, it's definitely, it shouldn't take 10 years. Yeah. That's, that's what I'll have to say about that. <laughs> so with the clinical trials that were, you know, that have been going out in the past, um, do they, I'm just curious, and you might not know this answer, but like, how you said with the testing now they can they can really define like these people have it these people don't mm-hmm. to do like a control test mm-hmm. um do do they have any idea of like what percentage clinical trials like they were off oh okay I, you know yeah, what i mean I like I if now we're saying, able yeah. to say like okay 100 we didn't say 100 percent, but like 100 percent of these clinical yeah. trials now are going to have the right individuals who have Parkinson's Mm -hmm. versus, you know, before we had this biomarker, we really only were like 60% confident. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just Yeah, that, that's a hard one for yeah, me to answer. I, but I think, like you said, it will increase the overall yeah. confidence. Yeah. Um, this uh, It is important to note that this test is about 90% accurate right mm-hmm. now. So, But I mean, 90% is, is a great score. Yeah. That's still an A, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's still an A, according <laughs> to the kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's switch gears a little bit. The fundraising and mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. people can get involved sure. because this biomarker – took 20 years or when did they really did they really just start it 10 years ago i mean michael j fox has been around for 20 years yeah. with the foundation mm-hmm. but this biomarker really started yeah yeah 2014 so okay. about nine years ago okay yeah so i mean that technology had taken about nine years but that technology had pre-existed mm-hmm. us they were using it with other disease spaces mm-hmm. So, yeah. And it's only, we're only able to do that because of everybody's donations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. giving. So, well. yes. No, I just, I, the question I came up with is so, do we, does he, does he, does the Michael J. Fox Foundation sponsor like global stuff? Like stuff Global globally? research? Yeah. yeah because, yeah, you know, like, sometimes stuff overseas, they can, it can pick up mm-hmm. so much faster than here because they don't have an FDA that's mm-hmm. slowing them down, stuff like that. So, do, do we, do, do we as a yeah. Parkinson's people, sponsor global research? Yeah, absolutely. So about 30 to 40% of the funding that we um, give out to researchers does go outside of the United States. So mm-hmm. one thing um, you'll hear a lot of folks at Fox say is we want to have lots of shots on goal. Mm-hmm. And we don't know where the cure is going to come from at this point. So um, if we can fund research in Israel or in Kentucky, it, you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter to mm-hmm. us. If you have a great idea that seems promising, um, we're, we're going to go for it. Do you have Team Fox fundraising all over the world then? It is mostly in the United States. Okay. Um, we do have some folks that run marathons for us internationally, mm-hmm. and that's where we see kind of that crossover, but yeah. mostly in the United States. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Joe Drake, he just went again oh, to no, do more London. marathons. Yeah. Gosh, they're I amazing. Know. They're superhuman. I, they I don't know how they do it. I really don't. <laughs> so how... <laughs> I, can't, I can't hardly run to the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> So how can people get involved? That because I've I've mm-hmm. gotten a lot of calls before on the five k that we started, and you know I turned mine into a nonprofit because we wanted to to do things locally as well. Mm-hmm. That's a big undertaking, but you know I, we could have just kept and just only uh, focused on the the research aspect, and that's sometimes what a lot of people want to do. So I know it was. I felt like it was easy for us yeah. to go in and do, but mm-hmm. so how can people get involved if they're looking to start something in their hometown? Yeah, well, let me first and foremost say thank you to all the work that you've done over the last few years. It's really just been incredible to get to know you, and thank you for helping raise yeah. so much money for Parkinson's research. Do um, it while I have the energy. Yeah. <laughs> 
the key. Um, but yeah, we make it really easy. So there's a couple things that you can do if you're interested in jumping in with us with Team Fox. Um, first and foremost, find a local event that you can attend. Um, mm-hmm. Just get your feet wet, meet the community, see who else is, is out there. They can be anything from 5Ks to um, things called Tips for Parkinson's, which is a bartending competition that we've done in the past. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that might be a good one. (laughs) Tips is good. Um, We see a lot of golf outings, galas. Uh, We, I mean, really, it's the sky's the limit. It could be a lemonade stand. Uh, Pancakes for Parkinson's is another fun Mm -hmm. one. Tips. Uh, tips Drinking pancakes. I'm seeing like a brunch theme. Pancakes and (laughs) boozy brunch. (laughs) Now we're talking my kind of fundraising. Yeah. Yeah. So you can start. You can start. You can start it. You absolutely could. So if you don't see something that is in your area, um, you can start your own event. And we have an incredible staff at the foundation that. Can, gra- can guide you from the beginning all the way to the end of your mm. event. And they have kits that can help you with messaging and how to ask for money, how to start a different mm. kind of event. Um, I just, I am in awe at all the good work that that team is able to do. I should get one of those kits. We should do that. I never did. We yeah. just we just went and did. And right. then Mary called us and said, do you guys need help? And I'm like, yeah, probably maybe. Um, do, you, do you guys actually go out? At, do you have team members that will help like with the event? Or is that only if it gets over a certain threshold? Yeah, I think it kind of depends on what each event needs. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, um, because there's so many events, we can't get to all of them right. throughout the year, unfortunately. Right. But we do try to prioritize those events that need a little bit of extra help. And mm-hmm. folks like me or members of the Team Fox uh, team might show up the day of to help with any logistics, whatever you need. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, really the support is leading up to the event and getting making sure you're grounded, you have what you need, and, and providing whatever kind of phone or email support you need ahead mm-hmm. of the event event but yeah we do like to get on the ground and attend I have so many good memories of Team Fox events they're just they're my favorite I I love this community and the nice thing is that that's why we when we started doing our event um, with with Michael J Fox is because one a hundred percent of all the funds Mm -hmm. do go to research so when you go through Team Fox um, and it was just so easy like signing up and you know getting a team um, and you know, figuring out like mailing in checks or doing the online donation, yeah. like it was just it made you guys made it very easy. Well, which good, is great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Team Fox has been around since 2006 and has raised more than 100 million dollars. Um, mm-hmm. And all of that, like you said, went directly towards Parkinson's research. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It's really cool. What else? I mean, are you guys when? I mean, obviously, you're still raising money for funds, but mm-hmm. I know that there's a lot of um, like when we talk to. Sonia, she was talking about the government policy type mm-hmm. stuff. Remember? Yeah, I mean, we've seen a couple. I think I think Michael J. Fox himself has actually testified several times. Yeah, mm-hmm. is there like are are the is that also like an avenue that you guys support oh, yeah. and anything new there? Because I know that they have that um, national plan. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we're on the same page. Yeah. So, you, good. so can you talk a little bit about that? Because I. Yeah. I I've touched on it, and did you? You didn't know about it, though, right? The National Plan to End Parkinson's. No. Okay. So edu- educate not. this guy. God, you don't read anything. <laughs> I do. <sometimes. laughs> well, that's why he has you. Yeah, you, I know. You, you get to filter it. Yeah. We only adjust in our life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we actually, we have quite a robust policy team now, and mm-hmm. they are dedicated on on doing better policies for pe- Parkinson's. Mm-hmm. And one of those things is the National Plan to End Parkinson's. And this is a, a bill that has supporters from both sides of the aisle. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, we have reintroduced it in both the House and the Senate. And essentially what this bill will do is just bring together different parts of government, uh, research, um, even people in the community, people living with Parkinson's, mm-hmm. and it will put Parkinson's under a microscope. I believe that the length of this um, kind of focus group would be about five years, mm-hmm. and they would be responsible to report regularly back to the government of their findings. So whether that be, we, we've touched on economic burden of mm-hmm. caring for somebody with Parkinson's, mm-hmm. um, that's over $52 billion 
dollars a year mm-hmm. federally. So you know, raising the profile of Parkinson's and how important it is to get additional research dollars is, I think, the underlying goal of that. I'm sure I'm oversimplifying that. I'm mm-hmm. sure my policy team will have wanted me to say a few more things on that, but um, this this will be an incredible tool for us to raise the yeah. profile of Parkinson's um, federally and hopefully at the end get more research dollars. Mm-hmm. Now this um, bill with this advisory group that they're putting together, um, it's not going to cost the government anything, just time who of whoever really is volunteering for this. Yeah. So Well, you know, the government didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of time. That's all we're asking. Yeah. Just five years of your time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing much. Yeah. That's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have ways for folks to get involved with that. Um, if you want to write a letter to your uh, Congress, yeah, thank you yeah. for doing that. They make it easy, though, right? Yeah, they definitely made you it easy. It's like button. you click the button, but I, I, I erased half of it and I put my own story in there in hopes uh, that I'd get like more. Yeah, but I, I didn't. Yeah, I they, still got the boilerplate yeah. email. Well, which it's, is fine. It's I mean, it's I, I understand our our state officials are busy, but I was hoping at least for like a little, yeah, little something. We'll keep at it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, get angry. (laughs) Get a camera. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, that's great. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you want to touch on with like what you're speaking about at uh, the Ohio Health piece or? Sure. Um, Yeah. The other thing that I I really want to hit on is just the different resources that are available at the Fox Foundation, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially, it doesn't matter if you're brand new in your journey or if you have been living with Parkinson's for quite a while. Uh, We're constantly trying to put out new guides, uh, blogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's podcasts as well. Uh, also, every third Thursday of the month, we have a webinar that has a specific uh, theme to it, and, mm-hmm. and we have panelists. So it's an expert, like someone living with Parkinson's, researchers, doctors, and we try to get all sides of the issue. And mm-hmm. they're they're available 24 seven on our website. So you have a competing podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I know. What's there's a, there's a lot. I think it, I'd like I to think of it as complimentary, right? <laughs> yeah, complimentary. Where's my head? <laughs> where where is your head? But yeah. Yeah, I've, I've I have seen I actually, yeah. um, the Fox podcast, obviously, but then there's you know all the other ones like PD Avengers that they have. Oh yeah, um, yeah. that they they do a nice job, and I mean even like the other foundations that Davis Finney Foundation does does one. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of information. It just depends on what people like so, if they want to listen to this guy or just watch <laughs> him sit here. All right. <laughs> Glad I can contribute. <laughs> <laughs> I've been really hounding the mic today, though, so sorry I didn't give you a whole lot of space. No, That's okay. No, he doesn't say much anyway. No, I just wait for openings for comments. Oh. He's quiet. <laughs> he waits for openings to say something inappropriate, and then Steve cuts Steve, it out. Yep, it's usually what happens. <laughs> so we've we're actually we we you, you're good this time. Oh yeah, no issues. None. Okay. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we really appreciate your time and all the work that you do at the Fox Foundation. Um, it definitely, obviously, goes a long way. There's a lot of amazing things that are happening, and it's it's an exciting time there. I think right now, yeah. so it's exciting time to have Parkinson's. Oh Great. my God! It's so awesome. Doesn't that sound sound so fun? Um, okay. Well, in our last thirty seconds, um, I will leave you with this. Definitely, you know, keep reading, do your research, use the Michael J. Fox Foundation as a tool of resources um, for you or your caregiver. There's so much information that you can go learn. And if you want to start fundraising and um, help give on your own, you can look for that as well. But as always, do what's best for you. Look at the information that's best for you and always consult with your doctor. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time.